Hello. Well, I'm going to try and finish this row off at some point. So, at some point. Doesn't that sound silly? But, well. Right. This is the Folklore Hair from Diamond Art Studio. And it is absolutely bliss. It really is. I'm starting to get on the hair's ears now. Which is nice. And then, been up for my fish and chips. That felt too good, actually. I sort of feel as if I must be I'm about to come down with something. You know, you sort of feel a little bit off. But you can't put your finger on it. Now, in the olden days, well, not that long ago, I'd have probably have had about 30 or 40 panic attacks by now. Because that's what would happen. I, my body will know that it's coming down with something long before it told my head that there was even a possibility. And of course then, you know, I kept thinking, what is this weird feeling? What's this weird feeling? And then before I knew it, I'd probably had about four heart attacks, seven or eight strokes, um, come down with typhus, got tuberculosis, um, and yeah, and convinced myself I was about to die in my next breath, if I was lucky enough to get a next breath. And yeah, it would be horrendous, but now, I still get like the panicky feelings, but they seem to meld into the others. I have a headache, I do know that. I don't usually get many headaches, but when I do, I do. And this one is sort of a one-sided headache. And it's tingly. So it's possibly a migraine starting. And I don't usually get migraines. But every now and then I get something and think, oh god, this is this is bad. But I don't like taking tablets for it. Which is stupid. But then, you know, what if it isn't? I've wasted <coughs> tablets. And I don't want my body to get used to tablets. Because then when I do actually need them. They won't be effective. I hate it when it does that, when it rides up. Look at it, riding up. Right, I need to get. Oh God. I'm trying not to knock down those. There we go. Get me flat iron to help. Mm. Yes, yeah, so it's. Oh dear, I don't know. Have my dietitian phone me up this morning. Been referred to a dietitian. I'm at the surgery, and I was thinking, for God's sakes, you're at the bloody surgery. I've been waiting over nearly over a year. I think it must be about that. Oh, it's been long enough, and it's like I had a good chat. I've had my last supper of my fish and chips. But I do need to lose weight and I do need to work out my food because I've got so many things going wrong with me that I... You know, one certain condition doesn't like me eating such and such foods. And the other one doesn't like me eating another such. And before I know it, I'm just eating the same old, same old, round and round in circles. And occasionally suffering in between hand because I've just said, what the hell, bugger it, I'm having it. And well, if I suffer, I suffer. Too bad. But my fizzy water, oh my God. I thought fizzy water would be better for me because it's not pop. But no, apparently I've got to really, I ought to give that up which is 
No. Fizzy water wakes me up, especially when it's cold. And it's not the same with flat water. But yeah, so, um, hmm. So I've got to... Because she was there saying something's acidic in your stomach and then one part is acid, acidic and then the other part is alkaline. And I'm thinking, oh, great. And because I've got duodenitis and gastritis, I said, do I have to take these um, Zeprazoles? I was told to take them for two weeks or so and see how long they, um, you know, how they, if they work. But I don't want to be on them long term. And while it's kind of helped in some ways with my um, phlegm, it's a horrible word, isn't it? My phlegm. It's, um, it's not helped in some other ways because now I, I, I feel the tickle and the cough, you know, the need to clear my throat, but I can't cough. Or if I do, I can't get to it. So it's, so it's, Win some battles, lose some battles. And so I asked, how long should I be on them? You know, how long does it take for gastritis and um, and um, duodenitis to clear up? Sadly, she didn't know. So I've got to find that one out because I don't particularly want to be on these tablets too long. But, well... Well, never mind, eh? Right, where were we? We're back on to 955. Look at these lovely colours. That's beautiful. Now we're getting more onto the blue ones, I think. Hmm. Oh, I was going to do all my, um, ABs. Ants and trees. It's not like DAC where you think, oh, it's one, two, three, four, roughly. They're usually the ones with ABs. Now, <coughs> they put ABs right at the very end. So it's ands and trees. And I haven't got any ands or trees there, so that's all right. Right. I've got this one out and I'm sure I needed some. Yes, there I did. There I did. Yes. So I shall do this. Do you know what? My um, battery is st to my scooter is still going strong. It needed a new battery. That's what it needed. I mean, it's practically been a week. I, I granted I haven't used it every day, but I've done a good distance on at least three of those days. Whereas before it wasn't even lasting one day. And I've still got enough, I reckon, to get me up and possibly back from a um, craft group on Thursday. But what I shall do is I shall take my charging wire up and I'll charge it up at craft groups. Then I don't have to have it in my house overnight because that's a pain. Right, have I done all this one? Oh, that thing's doing it again. <clears throat> Right, so have we got them? Right, I think I'm gonna call it quits on that one. And we will do, oh, got that one. What's that? It's just suddenly gone. It was stuck to my elbow and then it's just flung off. Oh, I had an order today come, come through, um, come in from Timu. <laughs> Productive. Um, yeah, it was um, an order, and it was some <coughs> Modao Zushi cards, playing cards, which I needed. So I'm pleased I've got those of the last ones. 
and so I've got those and then in with it oh and I got my um, car vent clips and there so I can do those little needle punch car coasters so I just do that make a little coaster and then I stick it on the end of this clip and then there's a car, car coaster clip which goes in the air vents and so I've got that and what else came oh and this little pack of um nail art transfers which must have just been a freebie they popped in but it got me I can't show them to you because they're upstairs now but they were um, they said nail um diamonds I think it was and um and I and I read it as Neil Diamond <laughs> Neil Diamonds Neil Diamonds so yeah yeah that just humoured me sorry normal transmission resumes tickled me 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 funny bone what am I on oh I'm on that funny thing there we go that, it's like a Japanese sign Is that katakana? Ah oh dear, is that it? Oh, I think it is. Right, it's it's interesting how as you go along the um the pattern you sort of um the painting you you slowly are adding extra symbols that you haven't seen before. And you, and it's quite nice because it doesn't throw you all in well this one hasn't thrown me all in at the deep end with using every single symbol in one hit mind you his ear is going to be a bit um all thrown in at the deep end but yes we will see let's do a bit of his ear shall we what's this one this is one let's see how colorful his ear looks because obviously you're looking at the pattern there and you're also looking at the completed picture but yet when it's in the flesh it looks so much better and sometimes quite different oh dear yeah seem to have put on weight again these jeans I went to do the button up and I went oh dear oh dearie dear <clears throat> and these at one point I could fit in no problem and they were probably a little bit too baggy that I had to use a belt but then of course I've been pigging out on all the things I shouldn't be like crisps and chocolate and sweets which you know type 2 diabetic even if I'm in remission of a sort I can't I shouldn't do it so um that's what I've done today when I went out I had to go into um, Sainsbury's en route to the fish and chip shop so yes whilst I had fish and chips that was all I got when I was out, except for the tea bags. I needed some more green tea, jasmine green tea. And um, so I went to Sainsbury's. And I was ever so good, considering the tea aisle is on one side and the crisp aisle is on the sec on the next, you know, you just have to turn around from getting your tea and you're facing the crisps. And then the aisle next door had the sweet aisle. So I did very well, considering I just got my tea bags. <coughs> just got them. And I came away. So I was well pleased. So I've just got to stick to that. I mean, craft group is going to be a bit hard. But, um... You know, if I just do something in moderation, then that should be good. And because I'm a visual person, I kept thinking, you know, oh dear, I need something to slow me down from eating because I do tend to eat fast. I think it's from time constraints at one point, you know, when 
when you had kids and you had to eat fast because if you didn't eat fast you wouldn't get any food or it'd be really cold by the time they were asleep or had run out of steam so it was um hems yeah so um and then other things i don't know and then you just sort of start eating fast and of course you're missing out on all the signals saying that you're full so she's given me some hints and some ideas and basically some of them i already knew and i thought right but now because she said them i'm now going to try and stick to them because you know so i'm going to do that so and she also suggested that's what you know using chopsticks because you try picking up rice with chopsticks i'm thinking actually i'm quite adept at picking up rice with chopsticks but um but yeah so that slows you down mindful eating basically so i've got to um so i'm going to try a bit of that granted today has been a cop out because today i had my um rest of my curry that i had the other night whoops and then i had my um fish and chips so that's my last supper i say so now it's going to be in moderation and try and you know another thing was that when i was growing up we had to eat everything that was on our plate <clears throat> and we got one sort of main meal would be in an evening around about six o'clock yeah we ate in between i mean we had breakfast usually cereal then there was lunch which was sometimes a sandwich soup or boiled egg or maybe nothing it depended what we fancied but then i blame it on the time off we got our freezer i remember going to guide camp on saturday and on the way back i can even visualize me in the back of the car coming back from guide camp this is in the day when my mum had a mini and we didn't have to have seat belts in the back and i was in the back and i was excitedly saying what was go what did it camp and all this and then um and then coming home and finding that there was a freezer we had now had a fridge freezer whereas before it was just a little ice box which could you know only hold one of those blocks of you know vanilla ice cream the ones that you put you sliced up and put into wafers you know two sides wafers make a sandwich and that was probably about it I think, to be honest, it was only ever mainly ice boxes were probably only used for the adults to store their ice cubes to have for, in their booze. I think that's probably why they were only that size small. And then suddenly we got massive ice boxes, you know, freezers. And my dinner that night, and I was so excited for it. But I think that was the downfall, to be honest. The thing of frozen food because I had frozen fish fillets and peas, frozen peas and frozen chips. Tasted absolutely wonderful. <laughs> but if I was to eat that now, I think, oh my God, no. And it was, you know, you cooked it in the oven, you know, everything. Whereas before it'd be like, you know, you get the potato, you chop up the potato into chips and then you'd wait until the pan got hot, boil, and then you'd throw them all in the chips. And then you'd have a pan on the stove for, for your peas to eat through. <coughs> Didn't have a microwave back then at that point. And the fish was in the um, oven. But then again, that was back in the days when, you know, if we did usually get fish and chips, went up to the chip shop and we got it 
fish and chips and it would be in the newspaper. Yeah, we used to get a little piece of um, like tracing paper square. But actually, I do remember times before we got that little piece of tracing paper, newspaper, um, plain paper type thing. But it'd be wrapped in newspaper. So as you'd be eating your fish and chips, chips or whatever, your hands would be covered in newspaper prints and you just picked up another chip and on your way, merry way one. And it was just... And then somebody in their infinite wisdom in bloody Europe decided that that was not good and we have to use proper paper. We can't use newspaper anymore. Loads of us complained because that was how it was. And we were okay. And it gave us something to read as well while we were eating. <laughs> now it's bloody boring. <clears throat> but well. Yeah, so um yeah, we have that. And I've lost my thread. Oh yes, yeah, so um yeah, so as soon as the freezer came in, that was it. Everything came down to being frozen. Oh, my mother used to like, the make was called brains, but they were faggots. And so every time I saw that, I would think faggots, I used to think faggots were made from brains. Not human brains, but animal brains. Cows, pigs, sheep or something like that. And I used to, oh, the thought of it, no thank you. Brains, faggots, oh, no way hated that and then the other alternative for delightful frozen foods was those findus you know where i'm coming from this don't you especially in the uk findus crispy pancakes Ugh. and they always had some chemically induced sauce white sauce or whatever that looked so unappetizing and whatever filling it was just blech. so processed and so many additives but of course that was what became the new norm then and because it was quick simple and then when we got microwaves it was quick and simple so everything just went into the microwave to be nuked and then it was done, boom, quick. And so that's where I think the eating quick comes from for a lot of us now, because we want the quick. We're not gonna wait for our dinner. Why wait for our dinner, a nice dinner that we perhaps made from scratch? Why wait when we can have something which, well, you know, may not be as nice, but it fills us up so we can get back to doing what we want to be doing. But the end result is that they're not the most of healthiest foods, are they? Full of preservatives, additives. And let's face it, we weren't fully aware of, let's say, plastics and how they affected our foods when sat close to them. So, um, yeah, so we're slowly getting um, embalmed as we eat. Uh, yes, that one's done. Yeah, just sort of think, wow, well, remember school meals? Oh my God, do you know what? I used to love it. It's crazy, really, considering. You know, the meals used to turn up at our school in big sort of canteen trays. And we'd queue up for our dinner. And the dinner ladies would be behind the server. And whenever we had mashed potato, it was always that, like, smash. But it, you know, poor man's school smash. 
so everybody knows what that's like. Except our teach, uh, our dinner ladies did used to put butter in it, I think. Butter or margarine to make it nicer. And um, should do the ice cream scoops. Two scoops if you were, if you were good. Or if you're a boy, for come to think of it. Girls, yeah, I think we got just one scoop and boys got two for some strange sexist reason. Probably just well. And what else then? Oh, and the chocolate sponge and mint sauce. It wasn't mint sauce as in savoury mint sauce that you have with your lamb. It was mint custard, basically. And it was that lovely um, mint coloured. So they'd obviously use perhaps, you know, two bottles worth of um, <laughs> mint colouring green sort of that nice green but with the chocolate sponge and, and that oh my god I love that I'd always try and get seconds from that if there was any and every now and then we'd have milkshake on our on our you know in our school dinners thing and so we'd have so I used to love that um because some people didn't like the milkshake goodness knows why I used to aim to try and sit on the table where I knew the people wouldn't you know didn't like it that much so basically I got more there was a big jug we used to get these big plastic jugs I can see them now with the lines down the side of it they were clear but they were so overwashed that they were like cloudy <laughs> but inside would be the most beautiful pink strawberry um um milkshake and oh god that was lovely and if i was on a table with one other person oh my god we were in heaven because it was like there's only two of us i like it Whee! yeah and then in winter time every now and then we'd have hot chocolate and that was nice and some people didn't like that either so there we go try and sit on the right table for that yummy but then there was things like god oh, chicken fricassee anybody remember what that was like that was chicken stringy chicken in like a, a watery creamy sauce and um, yeah, and I think there might have been the odd vegetable in with it. And if we had peas, they were generally overcooked and hard. And what else? Oh, the liver. Oh God, the liver. It was always so hard and it bounced. I remember one time it dropped into the floor and it bounced and we watched it. And then some of us else started throwing our liver on the floor just to watch it bounce mine bounce on yours we got right telling off that and then of course because nobody liked it because it was so tough um we had tables <laughs> and they were like square bit but you could see the tops of the legs but they had caps on well we managed to get some of the caps off of those i mean there was caps on the bottom so they're basically hollow these hollow metal legs and uh we used to drop any food that we didn't like down in those holes and recap it so after a while i bet there was a oh <laughs> they probably didn't know where it, where it was coming from yeah that and the cheese the cheese was oh rubbery as well that was like that um is it almental except without the holes you know it wasn't even like um processed cheese you know that you get in burgers or anything like that no and it just was it you went like that and it bent and it sort of ugh, it oiling up a bit in places not nice but then the dinner the puddings jam roly-poly and then spotted dick we had spotted dick and custard yep the amount of giggles that used to Miss, what's this called? You know very well what it's called. But I don't. I've forgotten. 
<laughs> and everybody's sniggering. <laughs> but yeah. Ah, oh dear, the joys. Is there any school foods that you had yeah, that you remember that had weird names or horrible textures or were really nice? Yeah, that was in the day when we had um, primary school and we also used to get the little bottles of milk. They weren't cartons or anything like that, they were proper little glass bottles about that big and they were sort of, and we had the straw in it, I remember that. Only in the um the young class, the baby class, class three as it was known. And when we moved up to the next class, we didn't get any. <laughs> but I do remember the class, the the baby class, class three. We had a piano one side of the room then we had a wendy house which was basically just a wooden thing and i loved the wendy house loved that and had all kinds of things in it like a you know they're all wooden things that you like you had a washing machine and stuff and it was and that was good and then we had also um little cards we're in a in a place and little cards and the cards had a picture at the top and then it had some sums. So two plus five equals. And then, so that'd be the pluses. So you'd have like a 10 or 12 quest, you know, sums on that. 10, I think. And then there was subtraction, and then there was division, and then there was multiplies. And we also had the boxes of rods, as we call them. Whereas they helped us do these sums. Because then we'd have orange. The orange rod was 10. So that was like each one was centimeters. So 10 of the white ones, the white little cubes, would fit in the 10 rod. So that was 10 and 10 little ones. And then twos would be blues, I think. And they were, yeah, blues, twos. So you've had five into 110. And then you had threes. I can't remember what threes were. Fives was red, if I remember rightly. We had a purple. I think that was nine. But that each one of them had it, so of course you'd work it out. So you'd get your rod, so say it was two plus seven, you'd get your two rod, and then you'd get your seven rod, put them next together, and then you'd see which rod would fit. And then you had your answer. And the beta books for maths. Remember when we got those? And the <laughs> Janet and John books. Come, see Janet, see, play Janet, play, job, ball. <laughs> so funny. But I really remember that class and everything we did in that class. Sing songs. And then we spent the morning doing a for apple, b for bat and ball, c for cat, d for dog. And all the way through that. And then fairy a makes e say a. Fairy e makes e say e. Fairy O oh, makes a uh, say ow. And we just went on like that. And then the English doing that. And then Friday afternoons will be playtime. So after break, for the last hour of school or whatever it was, we could um, take something of our own to take in and play. Or there'd be some games and some other things that we could, which were set out on the very small desks. And needless to say, whenever there was any work to be done, we'd have to go up every morning, every so often, and go up and read, take our reading books, which was Janet and John or whatever, whatever series we were on at the time. And then we'd um, read to Mrs. Whitting. And, and then we'd go away again and continue with doing what we were doing. That was a brilliant in the playing fields, playing school, you know, playing games. The high jump, which was just a bamboo pole over two things which went up. Obviously, it never went up that high for us. We were just doing the little ones where we jumped over. As we all prepared for sports day, which egg and spoon race, sack race. And if we won, first, second or third, we were given a token a little piece of paper, I think it was. And then at the end of the day, we could go and um, 
hand them in to somebody and we would be paid. We got paid for, for where we became on it. So it was something like 1p third place, 2p second place, and I think it was 5p first place. And because, you know, out of, out of so many games, you know, it wasn't ever, you know, humongous because we were a small village school. So yeah, it was fun. It was ever so fun. We'd have swimming because we did have a swimming pool, an outside swimming pool, the little one, and um, we'd do swimming. And yeah, so we'd do swimming in class and because it wasn't heated <laughs> and it was outside, it was whatever the weather was like. And it was bloody cold, you know, getting in the foot foot thing me jig, um, the foot bath thing, which we had to get in before we went up the ladder and into the swimming pool. You know, however cold that was, you knew darn well that the um, swimming pool was going to be uh, 10 times colder. And we'd all get in very carefully and lowering ourselves at the other end, down the other end, just to, you know, because it only went up to, I suppose, just under our chests. So it wasn't that deep, but it was deep enough, you know. And, um, and oh my God, we then had to line up along one side and then we'll be hold on to the side and we'd have to go down and chins in the water, always it was chins in the water. And getting to that point was horrendous because it was so cold. You sort of went, oh, no, I can't do it. Yes, I can't do it, I can't do it. And then somebody would splash you and you, you'd, you know, go, no, please, miss, they splashed me. But because I'd had a basically a drowning incident when I was um, seven years old, I fell out of a, a rowing boat in Langston Harbour in Portsmouth. Uh, myself and several others of us, we all fell out because it hit a cabin cruiser chain and overturned the boat. And so my friends, um, mum and dad, went under and so did me, my friend, my brother and his friend, his, his friend, which was the mum and dad's son and daughter. And I drowned, you know, I, I remember going underwater and really weird, it's warm, I could breathe. It's fascinating. And it was very bright, that I do remember. And I remember seeing, it felt like the bottom to be honest, because there was, there was like big stones. And I remember seeing an amazing starfish on one of them and thinking, wow. And I was just about to go off to look at it. And um, next minute I could have sworn I heard somebody say, "Not no, not time yet, kind of thing. And next minute I was, so I was just about to swim, you know, just swim off that way, I was breathing underwater. And the next minute I was, racing to the surface like I've been shot from a gun. That's what it felt like. And then, oh my God, then it was horrendous. Then I felt pain. Then I felt that coldness down my throat. Um, I was so cold, I was chattering. They gave me a glass of lemon barley water and I broke the glass because I was chattering and stuff. But it's very weird. But because I had had that happen to me, I was pretty nervous, even though it was in a swimming pool. And I got some people who would try and um, pull me under because they thought it was funny. And of course, I would then have a bit of a panic. And um, the teacher would always tell them off and tell them to get out and go and sit and think about what they'd done. Occasionally, I'd be allowed out because by that point, I was like, Ooh! but. But it was, yeah, we had that. And then after school, we could pay 5p and we could go swimming again. So from half three to four, was it four, four thirty? I think it was, we could, um, yeah, 4.30 it was, I think, we could go swimming again. 
And of course, when it was really hot days, we did. And I lived just at the top part of the village, so I'd cycle down or walk down and, um, and do that every evening that I could. And then, um, what and then? Oh, and then six o'clock, then we go back home, get our dinner. And then at six o'clock, we go back swimming again. So another 5p. But this time, after swimming, which is about seven o'clock, I think. Sometimes it's seven o'clock, we'd finish, or half six. And we would um, be in the school sports field because Sir uh, would, because um, they lived in the in the schoolhouse in the middle of the, um, there was class, the, uh, the Mr. Whitting's class, who was the headmaster. His class one was to the side of him. Then there was Mrs. Whitting's class three. And then in a mobile home sort of type, mobile classroom, there was um, class two, which was Miss Priestner's class. And we would, um, and we'd go into the, um, cause, and in between, in the middle between class one and three would be the schoolhouse, which was where Sir Mrs. Whitting uh, lived. And, and that was nice. And so they were on hand. And so we would then go and play um, rounders. Absolutely beautiful it was, really wonderful. just that was nice but yeah things we did at school of course but then we had things like the 11 plus oh my god I never could do any work very well at all with them tests I could do it off tests you know if I didn't have to be doing it on the day or whatever, I'd be fine. But when the second I got into a big room with lots of others and it was silent, I couldn't concentrate. I couldn't do it. So basically I failed my 11 plus. So I had to go to the secondary modern school, which actually in some ways was better for me because it was co-ed type thing. Have I got all these dollar signs? Mm hmm I have. Yeah, so it was, ah, oh, school days so long ago. <laughs> Nativity play, oh my God. That was in the church next door. Yeah. We had a recorder. There was always a recorder thing. Tune. And then we had silent, uh, these little bars, they were, and they were like a note. It was a bar, and we had a little metal thing. And each of us was given one. And then, so say I'd be A. So every time A came up in the thing, I'd have to hit my my thing and we made tunes that way that was incredible to hear us all doing a tune you know and it was just we all had individual you know bar things it was quite fun you know the amount of things that we did it was i would say definitely the best school anyone could ever have you know learning from tuesdays we would have country dance with Mrs Cameron in the afternoon so we'd learn things like Cumberland Square Reel and and Dozy Doe and lots of those type ones Cumberland Square 8 did I say whatever yeah which would we ever have useful <laughs> probably not I mean we weren't in Jane Austen's day, were we? Everybody went to the assizes to have their dances. And Wednesday afternoons, we'd sit in at the foot of Sir's desk while he read us, um, usually it was Secret Seven. 
stuff in the Brighton Secret 7, I think it was. And that was the Castle of Adventure. I remember that one. And various ones. And we'll be like going, oh, just one more chapter. Because it was so good. I mean, you know, that was the end of school. We, we all wanted to hear one more chapter, staying in school when, um, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the boys, up to a certain age, up to Sir's classroom, would have to wear shorts and the girls would wore dresses. We could wear tights though if we wanted to in, in wintertime. And, um, yeah, so we had that. And then we'd, nine o'clock would come, hear the church clock ring nine o'clock, whistle would blow and we'd all have to stop what we were doing. And then we would line up in our rows along, because there was like a, um, a netball court drawn up. And, um, and we'd be on the various lines. So the closer you were to the front near the entrance, just to go into the main hall would be the first years and second years and we all stopped always so we'd queue up there before we went into sir's room for assembly and assembly always consisted of um what's it called um a reading so one of us would have had to have done a reading religious job because we were a c of e school and um and we'd have a hymn And it was quite amusing, uh, quite amazing because it was, it was amazing how many of us sort of, you know, would have fainting fits from being stood up for so long and still. And it was like, oh, OK. And you knew when it was coming along, because I remember that, because you'd feel the, the little stars. And then you'll feel things going black and then that was it, you were down. Or you'd put your hand up if you knew it was coming on going, and they'd instantly know. <laughs> Because your colour was definitely not not pink or anything like that, and you know, catch them, and we'd have to we'd be taken out and sat on the bench, and it was fine because the secretary um, was in the room just opposite the benches where the cloakroom was, and her door was open. So that was. Yes, we have assembly, so we'd have that. But it'd be like before when we're waiting to go into assembly, it'd be like with a jump, turn, and we'd have to all jump and turn to face the right way the le to lead off into the school. And if it was, um, if Canon Rogers was coming, um, and doing his his little bit, he was doing a reading or something, always come to talk to us, or he was, sometimes he'd take part in the um, assembly. He'd come with his big black cassock cloak thing, and us kids would try and, on his, under his um, outer cloak, we would try and, you know, hide under it so we could go in, especially if it was bloody cold out there. And he used to let us, he used to let us hide there, knowing full well we'd get caught. And it was so funny, and he'd always laugh. I mean, of course, the teacher, Sir, and, um, and Canon Rogers knew what we were up to, because suddenly Canon Rogers looked extremely big. And there was like seven of us all wrapped around him, trying to walk in unison with him. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah, those are the good days. And um, where are we on now? Y's and F's. Oh no, H, we'll do that one because I saw it. Where are we on now? 49 minutes. Golly. Oh, Hatchy's not Y's or F's. This is Hatchy, which is eight in Japanese, if I remember rightly. Well, it is now. I can't remember. I did Japanese. Yeah. 
obviously I didn't do it long enough couldn't remember half of it and I stopped doing the Duolingo I did it a bit I did it on Duolingo for ages and learnt it quite well but then when I go into college and you're meeting and having to deal with other people and having to you know, converse in Japanese with other people I couldn't do it for some strange reason I knew I knew it in my head I knew I had to write things yeah but when I was doing the Duolingo I was really picking up on that really doing it quite well and then of course did uni stopped doing the Duolingo because hey, it got a bit expensive on that and um yeah now I can't remember hardly any of it I remember so many things but my grandson, he still knows some, because I taught him 1 to 10 in Japanese. L, Y, not F. And, uh, yeah, and we even found out the Kuke Kako song, which he liked. Which we got on YouTube. By some weird guys jumping around. Yeah, wines I'm on. God, I nearly thought I was on to F's again. Keep reminding myself on Y's. down swimming one time and I went up I'd gone to the after school swimming went home and I thought I'd been clever and I'd um yeah, got me other swimming costume out the dry one and um and I put it on underneath my clothes and I had a short little skirt and because it was you know you were kids and you were you know it was sunny it was so warm and um and a t-shirt and then, of course, get down there, go and do the swimming. It was only after I was drying myself off and getting dressed, I realised I had basically forgotten to pack my knickers and I had a short skirt on. Oh, did I get some teasing. Yes, I was mortified. But luckily, I didn't live far from home. So I raced up and raced back down. And I was back in 10 minutes. And I still got laughed at and ribbed for it. I did things like, show us your knickers then. And it was like, no. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were so lucky to live so nearby because it was just, it meant I could do, I could do it every, every day in the summer. And I used to feel sorry for those ones who um, lived too far away that, you know, maybe they could get the parents to pick them up for one, one of those sessions, maybe two, but they couldn't, you know, they couldn't do it every day like I did. Yeah, so we all learnt to swim well, you know, well before, probably about six or seven we could swim by. Yeah. We did armbands first and then we went without them. Yeah. We used to swim the wits to start off with, chins in the water, doggy paddle, and a lot of us would sink, well our bottom halves would sink, and then the ones who could swim better, they did the lengths. And the ones who, um, whoever got, whoever on one point, um, if, if it was wits, I remember wits, um, if we're doing wits, um, we all went up there and the first person to, um, to get to the top towards the, you know, getting out time, um, who got to the other side first, they could get out first, so they always had a head start in the um, in the um, in the change rooms because we had a boys' change room and a girls' change room, so it was always nice. B 
because it was a small shed. It was like one of those eight by six sheds. No, it must have been bigger than that. It must have been bigger than that. Either way, you know, and with all of us in them, it got a bit tight and a bit close. And of course, wet bodies and wet clothes, you know, swimming costumes, swinging around and slapping everybody and stuff like that. You really wanted to be in and out of that change room pretty damn fast because by that point, then things were getting really cold. And you wanted to be out sat in the sunshine. Yeah. Quite amusing. Ah, that one. Yeah. God, some days it was really cold. We were like, oh, the temperature is 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 54 degrees Fahrenheit. And you like, they go, oh, bloody hell. I think it's 50 Fahrenheit. I don't think it was Celsius because we mainly did things in Fahrenheit. But things did get swapped over because we used to say old money, new money. So it would be like old money would be Fahrenheit, new money would be Celsius. slow on this today wow later on i will be putting up my um at four o'clock there'll be crafting wednesday and i think i'm going to be doing perhaps a little bit more i might do a little bit more of um putting those cards together those diamond art cards that i'm doing because I do have a few of those. But I might just do those cover minders instead. So we will see. I hope you some needle punching of those um Little car vents, pretties. That one. Yeah. Right. We're nearly up to an hour. <sighs> Look at that! Until I've been talking. If that's all I can do in about an hour me chatting when I get to be doing my um my challenge that other one that um, that, um strawberry shortcake one I'm trying to see how much I can do in 12 hours I don't know how far I'm gonna get but I'd like to start on that at some point soon and I'm, I'll probably do well it'd be an hour each session I think I don't know, I've had so many ways that I thought I was going to do it. And now I don't know again. So now I've changed my mind again. So um, however I do it, I will do it. I was going to do a live, but oh dear. But I don't know. Mm. All right, shall I do one more colour? I'll do one more colour and I will do an N. N. Quite a few ends. And then I will stop and finish the rest of this square off cam. Before I film my next. Oh, nearly put that on a pie. As in 3.14. wet today. Again, we're supposed to have all these storms, aren't we? 
definitely a bit rainy last night. I heard it bucketing down at one point. Rainy. Wednesday, what have I got to do tomorrow? Nothing really. Well, I should go and take my, get my bloods taken, but I can't be bothered, so I'll do that. Friday, I think, when I've got my um, wheels charged up from Thursday. And Thursday to craft group, I'm going to take my needle punching and do some car coasters, uh, you know, not car coasters, car um, fence. Now I've got those clips, I'm going to try them. Probably do little flower ones. So tonight I might be on Pinterest doing little um, what's it called? You know, patterns, making some patterns, and after looking up some things, then I got to make some patterns. So I might do that tomorrow. Make some patterns and laminate them. Cut them out and laminate them. So then I can just use those patterns to draw on. I've got to figure out the sizes. Because I've got my coaster sizes ones. Then I've got to figure out the car coaster sizes. And then the air vent rough sizes. And the key charms, key rings. Yes, that's what I've got to do. I did quite a bit the other day. The other day, yesterday, that was the other day. Yes, of course it was. I um, cut out a load of, um, I found my six by six inch black cards. These are, these are greeting cards. And um, you know, so they were six by six and they were, you know, like that. Obviously they had innards and then I cut them out of my Sizzix. So all I've got to do is just um, even them up and then, um, then they're ready to use for my, um, you know, to create these ones to put all this pile, I've got a massive pile together. I mean, these are just some of them, see. I won't do all of them, I should just do mainly the pictures and the mandalas, those ones. And then I've decided, oh, there's one missing on that one. I've got to, um, what's the word? Yeah, I've got to down put down my website and um, sort it out I've got, but that means I've also got to go up to my unit up to my office and do a stock take on the fabric that I've got up there because some fabric's gone and I don't particularly want that being sold when I haven't got any more of it. I'm doing N, aren't I? N, not Pi. Even though they look similar. They look nothing similar. But I think they do. Yeah, I think I needed food. That's what I needed. I'm feeling a little bit better. Right. Have I done all the ends? Yes, I think I have. And if I haven't, I haven't. Right. So, on that note, I'm going to love you and leave you. And I'll just continue this off cam. And I will see you in the next one. Okay, then. Bye.